Welcome back, Brick Maniacs, to another episode of Brick Mania TV. Today on Brick Mania TV, we have a World War I special. Right? Special. Is it? It's pretty special. We have many special. Many specials. Okay, so what do you want to talk about first? Which kid? Know. Let's ask you two. What do you guys want to know first? They, they can't. They can't. They can't talk to us. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> this one. <laughs> this one. That's, uh, that's what they said. Okay. So, this is the Vauxhall D Type staff car. Cool. Our kit name is D Type. D Type World War I British staff car. Look at so, that. Dark green in color. Yeah, well, let's let's oh, take a second yeah. to admire the beauty of this model. It is a very nice model. It is pretty nice. <laughs> Thank you. And this is kind of a little bit out of the ordinary for, for Brickmania. Yeah. And we're starting to kind of branch out, try, try new things. Yep. So. so Dan's been sitting on this idea for a long time. Ever. Forever. <laughs> for uh, uh, trans-clear dishes with printed spokes on them. Yeah, look at that. So we just kind of built a staff car around that idea. Exactly. It's cool. It really gives that, especially from, from a bit of a distance when, you're, when you can really see the light through it. Um, it really gets that illusion of just, just spokes being there. Yeah. So. And you can see all the way through. That's cool. That's cool. So on the spare tire, you can see it also. Nice. Even though it's printed on the opposite side. Well, they're all printed on the same side. Yeah. It's just since that dish is inverted, you can still see the spokes through it because it's transparent. <laughs> Is that how that works? That is how that works. Wow. Cool. Uh, any other features on this uh, model that you want to point out? It's, pretty, some... it's pretty much just a car. Yeah. Um, yeah, World War I car. I think they were started being produced or at least used in the field in 1915, the specific one. Uh, it comes with two figures. Driver. We've got a driver and an officer. And he stands in the back with his arms up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Any challenges in building this kit? Challenges? Yeah. What was the what was the most difficult part of building this kit? In designing it? Sure. What do you mean? What what are they going to have trouble with? Uh, let's <laughs> uh, in designing it for you. Uh, in designing it, um, mostly just the width of it. Yeah. Because it's it's so. I mean, that wasn't challenging. Obviously, it's easy to build an inaccurate width on a vehicle, but I think it seats five. Yeah. So the struggle was, oh, I can't fit five guys in this car. Yeah. <laughs> I can fit two. Right. So that's the drawback. It's, it's kind of a drawback for making anything scale. Yeah. Um, especially airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So. I think Lego, Lego builds to a, sim a similar scale or, or yeah. right? Yeah. So you try to keep it within that. So it's a, it's a little, is it a bit it's, narrow, but it's like overall it's about right? It's like how Lego would design a car, right. I guess, is kind of what that looks like. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's to scale. Yeah. To scale with everything else we do. Mini figures are also really, really wide. Yes. <laughs> at this scale, so, uh -huh. you know, if their proportions were a bit more accurate, I guess, it, it wouldn't, you know, yeah, anyways, this is cool. Uh, I, I, lo I love the gold detailing and the, uh, the green, the dark green looks yeah. really sharp. Dark green and gold and some more printed, printed, uh, printed kit number. Yep. Kit number kit four. Number three, four, three, four. Cool. That's correct. Sweet. Right. Um, next up, we have an all-new figure, and you're seeing it here first, right? Yeah. This is the World War I Harlem Hellfighter. The Harlem Hellfighters were part of the 369th Infantry Regiment of World War I, and they're notable for spending more time on the front lines than any other American unit. Uh, it was an all-African-American unit, uh, and I believe there were uh, Puerto Rican as well, some Puerto Ricans in there as well, um, but just really notable. Like, you know, these guys were tough fighters, so we wanted to make a minifigure to pay homage to that. So we, uh, we pulled out all the stops when designing this minifigure. He's printed everywhere. Custom face, custom helmet. It's the Adrian helmet. It's kind of an interesting uniform. It is an American uniform, World War I uniform, uh, with French uh, gear. So it's like the, the ammo pouches on the front and the back. That's all French. Um, for the LaBelle rifle. The LaBelle rifle here is included with this minifigure. Um, and that's a, is that a prototype, Dan? 
Yes. So that is a prototype LaBelle rifle. Handmade by Will. Handmade by, hand injected by William Chapman himself. Handmade in USA. Carved from a solid block of ABS. <laughs> Carved from a solid block of ABS. <laughs> nod. He nod from a solid, he just chewed it, chewed it away to make, no he didn't do it. He, injection molded using state of the art. Yeah, so just now anyone yeah. can do it. Just go into your kitchen and get your ABS injection molding machine. Yeah. Um, Standard. Yeah, printed stand here and texture printed helmet and texture printed Croix de Guerre. And that's the uh, award that they received from the uh, French government uh, for their service during World War I. Super cool figure, super historical, awesome history. If you haven't read up on this guy, these guys, check them out. <coughs> Next up <laughs> in our World War I extravaganza episode. Yes, so we have a very goofy machine here. Look at this machine goofy machine. It is the uh, J-Type. Yes. That's what we're calling J-Type Lorry, I believe we're calling it. Uh, with QF 13 pounder AA gun mounted on the that. back. That's cool. So, yeah. how, does that, so how does that accurately pivot? You got, so you it accurately it. pivots here. It's okay. just harder because you kind of have to hold it on the My bad, space. my bad. I believe its elevation was 80 degrees and 360 degrees of rotation on the gun. Yeah, it's a cool gun. A lot of little details on there. So, initially when they developed this, I think it started coming on the scene about 1915 also, sure. uh, as well as the staff car. Um, that's just a counteract bombers, German yeah. bombers. So they aim that straight up in the air, or yeah. 80 degrees, sorry, right? It, it's unknowable how effective they truly were. Unknowable. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> um, defending themselves, you know, how often they could take down a bomber or any type of aircraft. Uh, so the struggle initially was getting enough velocity to reach that high in the right. sky with a, with a cannon. So I, I believe they started with an 18-pounder gun and stuck a sleeve down the barrel um, that could fit the diameter of the 13-pounder projectile. So just, it made it a longer barrel. So right? it made it higher velocity, and so I could velocity. pack a larger charge in the 18-pounder gun and then fall, fire the 13-pounder okay. projectile okay. through that to get higher velocity so it could reach higher in the sky. Um, so initially that's how it started out, and they just mounted it on the back of a um, Thornycroft. Thornycroft? Lorry. Yeah, that's the company. Thornycroft, Thornycroft Lorry. <laughs> and yeah, so they, they just threw it on the flatbed. Uh, you got these fold down panels here. Yeah, what does it look like in, uh, in transit mode? Transit mode, it would be probably like this. A lot of times they had a canvas cover that could stretch over the top. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't find any accurate images of that in the field. I think they just removed them all together. I just guess I didn't find a purpose of having the canvas over you. Sure. <laughs> any tactical advantage to sure. having that. So um, in the back here. Yeah, I, I like this detail. So you, you can. The kit comes oh. with two. Um, oh. oh, nice. It's because I'm sweaty. With two brick arms <laughs> uh, shells, right? Yeah, so these are uh, H. H EDP rounds, HDEP. Anyways, uh, it's a brick arm <laughs> that you, you couldn't buy separately. Right. But now uh, we can include that in our kit. I think it was from the Moz yep. launcher. Yep. Uh, Looks very similar to um, what they would use back then. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit shorter. So it can actually fit in a 2x2 two two space, whereas the Perfect. other um, part of the projectile, you can't fit that really in a 2x2 two two space. So it nice. makes it really nice for fitting it inside of a a breach for our guns. It's a fun little play model here. You can mm -hmm. nice. So close that yeah, up. Yeah, got a couple pickaxes, and then they had these blocks. That and they up. really were just blocks. Yeah, they really like, were just blocks. Just chunks of wood or something, right? Yeah, chunks of wood or chunks of concrete or something. So let's just stack up in the back of the vehicle, wherever you want. You can stick them all the way down. You can just barely you can stick build them a little, on. Little fort with them if you want to. Yeah, sure. Building blocks. So these uh, feet come out and they can actually get pushed back in. Unless that one's already in. There we go. But it's really difficult to pull them out because it's on a friction pin. Ah. So if you got really strong fingers, you can extend them out, but they don't really need to be extended out all the way unless you sure. wanted to. Uh, underneath, I kind of built simulated uh, leaf spring yeah. suspension and a little bit of a drive shaft. With the differential there, it's cool. Yeah, a little differential. A little diff. A little bit of detail in there. And because with those two figures that you've designed. Yep. So that's how it would be in transit. 
I believe that's cool. the parking brake, and I think that's the shifter. Yeah, I like that interior uh, detailing of that. Um, I think I included a gas pedal and brake pedal too. Yeah. Really? What? I didn't see that. <laughs> what? You, what? I can't even see that. That's cool. Extra details. Yeah. That's nice. Extra. Um, extra. That's a, a nice, simple design for the uh, the cabin. I don't know what you call that. The cockpit. <laughs> yeah. The cab. The cab. There we go. <laughs> that's the word. Um, a nice, simple detailing. I like these. Uh, what are these called? Panels, mm -hmm. and the cool sloping to it. One by three panel. It's great. Love it's great. It. Love it. So you can fit two guys in there. I didn't push them down all the way. Right? They're holding hands. No, they they fit. Do they? They've adequate space. You're a liar. Oh yeah, there we go. I'm not a liar. I believe you. Cool. They're in there. Okay. <laughs> uh, I can go over the figures if you want. Yeah. So I have two different minifigures here with printing. I didn't do side printing this time, um, but I did try out a, um, a newer technique with these figures. We, these have these have been in a kit before, I believe. The uh, this, this kit is this. Are these the first time they did no uh, the QF QF thirteen pounder? Yes, these have been. In the, these, were, these were originally in the QF thirteen pounder. We really liked uh, these figures. They, the they just turn out great and they're pretty simple to produce. Um, got some cool arm printing front and back on this guy. Mm -hmm. And with the leg wraps on the front and the back, nice, simple, basic World War One uniform for the British. Um, yeah, I think that's it. All right, turning it up. over. What's up? I've got to turn it over to Yitzi. Turn it over to Yitzi. Oh, Yitzi's on this one too. What? Yeah. This is this really is a <laughs> this is a big episode. Okay, okay. Thanks for ha thanks uh, for being on the episode, Cody. <gasps> Welcome back to the intermission. Uh, now we have Yitzi, Master Builder Yitzi, with so, his addition to our World War One special. This is the first episode where we have two multiple builders on at once or something? Nice. I think it might be. Maybe. So, we're making history. Let's just say it is. It is. Absolutely. Bookmark this video. Keep it forever. On your desktop, just right in the middle. <laughs> right. A shortcut to it. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> which kit do you have for us? We have this little guy. Look at that little guy. Along with... That's two actual minifigure Adorable guys. little killing machine, look at that. This is the uh, QF um, Ordnance 4.5 inch howitzer, British field gun. That is, a, that's, okay, that's a mouthful there. <laughs> Say that five times fast. I, Say it one time. Say it, no, I can't even, okay. I can't, I can't. Um, uh, the designer was Coventry Ordnance Works. It was from uh, used from 1908 to 1944, so World War One, World War Two, and in between. Um, uh, 4.5 inch. Um, it replaced the BL5 inch. Um, also, the 18 pounder was eventually replaced by the 25 pounder um, in World War One. I, I believe it. Um, eventually became one of uh, the most widely used. Um, so the, the 4.5 inch in millimeters is 114 millimeters, and like the Germans had a 105, so it actually uh, outgunned the German one. France didn't even have anything, uh, Russians maybe had something somewhere close. Um, they eventually used this, a lot of countries used this gun. Cool. Um, they had different batteries uh, that they would set up, uh, start off like with four guns each, then six, and then they went back to four. Um, and then all uh, units that had 18 pounders, they started adding these with them to su help support them because it was a uh, larger gun, could go farther. Um, I think it had about 65, 6,600 yard range. Right. And velocity uh, was over 1,000 feet per second. Wow. So pretty decent for the time. Um, it was probably, uh, it was a uh, horse drawn originally and then throughout the years eventually just the gun itself didn't change much mm -hmm. but the um how it was transported that changed cool so eventually that got mechanized and all that all right anyway. that's that's a little bit of history um moving on to the yeah. model what Over. do we have so i like that first of all what i noticed i really like that barrel piece um, i don't know if we used that before we have used we have. it before cool. yeah i i think i started off with that in the uh the whole roll Okay, oh, right. The Japanese. Uh, That's right. I knew it. Yeah. Because I realized that I could fit a brick arm in there, 
and put a loading breach. Right. And I'm like, if I'm able to use it, that's what I'm going to do. And we See did the I same thing here. That. So it includes a brick arm, uh, which is in there. You can take that out. Okay. Um, the breach, I, you know, it's maybe not 100% accurate how it loads it in, but it's Lego and it's cute and it, you, know, <laughs> it, you can load it and hold it in there. So I definitely thought I'd include it. Um, of course, you could purchase more more shells from Brickmania. Nice. Um, yeah, you've got the uh, you've got a sight on there. Yep. Um, that is a fun play feature, that, that loading breach. That's cool. I love it. <laughs> I like cool. playing with it. I, I hope you guys do too. Yes. Then you have a cleaning rod down in here. Yep. So one of the guys, you have two guys that come with it. One guy can you know clean the barrel. And those are held on by some brick arms U clips. Brick arms U clips. Yep. Let's and um, before you shoot the gun, actually. Yeah. Another feature you have on here is right now. So if it would be being pulled, the wheels turn, obviously, mm -hmm. but there are brakes here. If you fold these down, check that out. Put the brake down on the right and on the left, it actually locks the wheels. Oh, cool. So that's a working feature that uh, keep it in place. Um, now, traversing, if you want it to go right and left, yep. you actually have this traversing handle here that, you know, one of these guys would grab it and, like, okay, shoot it over to the left, pull it that way, okay, right. over to the right. So that was their little deal, so I thought I'd include it. Cool. And um, there you go. Nice. Well, that's the kit. Uh, a nice, simple little cannon here. Um, and, and the guys. And the guys. Cool. It's a cool little addition to everything else World War I that we have here. For more information, uh, check out BrickMania.com. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. So thank you very much for watching.